Chapter 8, A Decisive Battle. So at the end of the last installment, I fought through the Castle of Darkness, which is the Shogun of Darkness' stronghold, and I took down some random guy, and just as Ryu was about to recover the Bushido scroll, he gets slashed really badly by the Shogun of Darkness. His, you know, he's pretty much fucked right now. And we discover the reason why the Shogun left the Geisha alive and captured it in the first place, I would assume, is because he's planning to use her as a sacrifice in order to um, bring out the full power of the scroll. And, you know, as Ryu is like pretty much fucked, he's like, I just need more power, and the sword goes all magic and whatnot, it starts reacting with the Bushido scroll. The Shogun's like freaking out. Uh, Ryu pretty much wears like tan, you know, a lot of darn and crap, you know, instead of fucking shit like most of us. And Shogun of Darkness is apparently falling into that groove as well. Bushido emits a strong light and transforms to a ball and enters Ryu. So now the Bushido scroll is inside Ryu. Uh, and in order to get the scroll back, the Shogun states that he'll get it back even if he has to cut Ryu apart. Uh, he completely lost grip on the Gaisha, so she's clear now. So this sets the stage for the marathon boss fight typical for the series. However, unlike most of the boss fights in the series, this one's actually really easy. Uh, the first form, it's pretty much a direct copy of the Samurai of Sutenkaku. Except, you know, I've got a much better power-up this time, and he's slightly harder to deal with. Oh, by the way, um, if you get your Nimpo meter up to 999, you actually get infinite Nimpo. I avoided doing that for much of the game because it's really, really cheap. If you want to take this guy out without using Nimpo, you just have to do what I did there a second ago. Wall jump off and slash him while he's doing that. Although that's really time consuming and since it's really easy to get infinite Nimpo, I would assume most people would actually have that by this point. So I'm not too concerned about using that. Plus the final boss rush. So you know, let's, let's just go with that. And after he goes down, the room changes and we get a new form to fight. This is actually his final form, which is really, really fucking tame by the series standards. Just look at this. He's really weak. He just goes up, he shoots at those fireballs, and he uses the lightning, which is like a homing attack. If you have to take a hit at all, make sure you take one from the projectiles. Colliding with the head actually does two points of damage instead of one. So, yeah. Sadly, the large shuriken only counts one hit. Because if it counted as two, he'd be down by now. Yeah, uh, you pretty much have to crawl under him when he goes up. Trying to jump over him also works, but it's considerably better just to try to go under him. Fuck, this fight's getting close. Really fucking close. Oh shit. We are tied, we are tied. Come here, you motherfucker. Yeah, hey, you like that. So, that's Ninja Gaiden for the Master System completed. Uh, fairly easy, actually. Uh, Alright game, you know, once I adjusted to how the controls just don't quite feel right and how it's different. Uh, you know, it's the storyline here is pretty much simple. The Shogun just dies and somehow melts. And apparently he's made up of a bunch of evil spirits sort of collected together or something. I don't fucking know. And he's apparently a load-bearing boss. Strangely, one of the few in this. Um, also, one thing that's a little bit unusual about this game, um, the whole thing seems to take place entirely in Japan. Most games had you going all over the world, and even when you're talking about like the newer games, they do that as well. But this one's like completely focused in Japan, there's like a really strong Japanese thing going on. Uh, you know, by the time the boss dies, he states that he's going to come back again someday. But I wouldn't count on it because, uh, you know, they sort of seemingly abandoned the whole storyline and idea going on here. So, you know, there's nothing there. We got a shot of the crumbling uh, place, then we have the credit roll. Ryu and the Geisha, right there. Um, 
So yeah, pretty good game once you're used to the controls being a little bit unusual and odd. Uh, it's plagued by some of the same problems as the older games, and you know, I'm kind of a little bit annoyed because some of the improvements that were made on the system as they were going through the Nintendo games, those were gradually like taken away over the course of this game. It's like they pretty much set you right back to like the first game. It could be considered, you know, a bit of a throwback or whatever, but it just feels kind of wrong. And in some cases, like the wall bounce thing, it actually feels like a downgrade because the wall the wall bounce thing, that just really fucking feels wrong and it's going to get you fucked up a bunch of times, especially when you activate it completely by accident. And, yeah, uh, other stuff. So, the game's complete. Bushido Scroll recovered. Sam uh, Shogun of Darkness dead. Geisha rescued. Game fucking over. So, that's this LP in the can. Fuck you all and good night.